The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Where my girl got the sweetest pussy. Hey, welcome to Sin City Bounty. This Duh. is Alexia from The Crew. Right here we have the beautiful Toxie and, of course, Sierra, the most awesome person on the planet because she threw me a party for my birthday. I sure did. I made her cry, too, when we sang happy birthday on that birthday cake. Yep. You were crying. I, I saw. Was, I was. And... There were men in togas, which was awesome, mm -hmm. and girls in togas, which was really awesome. There were only two not in togas. There were, there it was were, me and that baby daddy. There was dogs in togas. There were dogs in togas. <laughs> it was uh, very, very fun. My actual birthday is coming up this Saturday. Uh, I have an Amazon wish list, I think. If you guys want to get me something, that'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> we should totally link our Amazon wish lists on Facebook. We can do that. Let's do that. I have one for Sierra. Somewhere. I do not have an Amazon wish list. You're going to have to get you one together. set one up for Toxic. Um, or you can just send them here to the studio because uh, we're broadcasting live from this fabulous the studio, uh, studio www.dbtv.com. From here in uh, gorgeous, gorgeous Las Vegas. The weather is getting modified. Oh, nice. I love this weather. So <clears throat> nice. Anytime the weather is not in triple digits, I enjoy it. It's getting so nice here, and it's going to last pretty much the rest of September and almost all of October nice. until probably the middle of November until it starts getting cold. Fall okay. in Las Vegas is when it is less than 90 degrees at 8 a.m. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's the way it's been for like three days. We were, do you know that we only had like three days that were not triple digits from the beginning of May until about a week ago? Yeah. Three yeah. It is. It's, well, you know, that whole thing that's not real, climate change. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's that thing. How's that going for you? <laughs> Hurri what are we on, Hurricane Zulu now? Like, on, we Jose. still got nine weeks to go? It's Jose and Maria, right? Yeah, and another one's, like, coming up the rear. But um, chink. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Mexico just had, like, a huge earthquake. The first one since, like, yes. five or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, LA had an earthquake. LA had an earthquake, but you know, with the there's it's nothing happening to our planet. Nothing. I don't know if earthquakes are caused by uh, climate change. No, they're caused by the well, one of the they're, caused, they're caused by the plates, shifting, shifting in the plates. Right. Yeah, they're caused but, by an angry god. You know what it could be? But All the people from the islands in Florida moving across the country <laughs> shifted, shifted the, the weight. But can't can't the the <laughs> climate affect the plates movement not really no. uh, yeah i don't think so i don't know climate <laughs> happens above the earth tectonic to, plates are the earth we need to uh, get a hot geologist on here man <laughs> i used to know a hot geologist is anyone out there a hot geologist who would uh <laughs> but and that was like pre-facebook like days though hot no, geologist we was should do that we should get like a hot meteorologist a hot geologist um i, I took yeah. I, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I, I a, dated a hot geologist. That's funny. I took a, meteoro a <clears throat> meteorology course in um, college, and it was, like, taught by a hot professor. I don't remember anything about it. Like, Nerds I don't know how hot. that shit happens, Nerds are super hot. But he was hot, so I stuck it out. <laughs> Nerds are totally hot. But to we, we should ask now. Maybe hot. we can get access to a hot meteorologist. Just put in a call to UNLV. Okay. No, no. We we got connections at the TVs. Yeah. At the TVs? Yeah. Oh. Yes, we do. We have a connection, like, to the news. Ricky Cheese, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we need also, to get Ricky Cheese on here again. I'm going to be on Fox 5 News. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so It's going to be awesome. We're going to post a link on it. She's not going to Sierra, though. She's going as a totally different person. <laughs> as my real person owner. Person owner? She's going to just be owner. making ones up. <laughs> I She's am. Gonna be making them up left and right. I am. I will be my real selves without all the fucks because it's real TV. She has done so well. There's been a couple of times where she couldn't say the word fuck in a in a 
in a meeting situation, and she was so proud of herself, she had to announce it to the rest of us. I did. I was you like, "You would have been so proud of me." I dropped zero f bombs, and I only said hell once. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say cunt either. That's one of my favorite words. Mine too. That's my least favorite. I don't use I know. It. You know that in in the UK I know they call They use cunt like we use fuck in the yeah, UK. Yeah. You cunting asshole. Yeah. <laughs> the hell accent was that? I don't know. It was a mixture of some <laughs> shit. It was a, it was a UK United. <laughs> she combined all of the I accents. did. I got a little Welsh in there on the ing some part. Scottish, like some Welsh Irish. Mm -hmm. She's Scottish too. I wouldn't mind getting a little Scottish in me. I'm going to go home and put a lot of scotch in me. <laughs> been a fucked up week. Yeah, it has been. You've been doing a lot of complaining, which you don't normally do. <clears throat> I don't normally do, but uh, my my wonderful, fabulous, fantastic job sucks my giant dick right now. <laughs> and if you happen to be watching, she is just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's part of the show, people. <laughs> no, not kidding. Yeah, and I... No... I'm not kidding, <laughs> and I told them that. Oh, I had a item. Has anybody heard about what Alex Jones? You know who Alex Jones? Yes. Is? Nope. He's a right-wing wacko on Infowars. See, that's why I don't know him. Okay. Totally whacked out. So I lean, I only know him as also the purveyor of fucked-up conspiracy theories, oh, yeah, like absolutely. how the silver lining on the inside of kids' juice juice boxes uh, was treated with a chemical to turn all boys gay. Wow. Do you know, have you heard what his ex-wife <coughs> is doing? She is suing for divorce. She's suing for divorce, but she's also putting up a website and telling all his dirty little secrets. <laughs> here's, here's what I would do. I would actually, Somebody likes kitty porn. I would actually encourage you to watch it once. I watched it, not on purpose. I was watching... <laughs> I was watching another show that that was kind of mocking a segment and um and so i watched it and then after that segment i go this can't be a real show like this can't be a real thing this was obviously a joke for this other you know talk show and so when i went on and i'm like oh fuck this shit is real like this is this well it's is not real, real. it's just about like... watching alex jones yes oh and you watch it and you're like, he said what? Like, yeah. you can say that and that's yeah. okay? Like, you just pulled that out of your ass? He is also one of the first people, I believe, that came out that said 9-11 was an inside job. But, and, he's that guy. And I think oh, if you Lord. watch it, if I'm not mistaken, he's the one who also sells supplements. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, that's how to fund my show. So by, by the way... Um, the inside of juice boxes will turn your kids gay, but to prevent okay. that, buy all of these supplements yes. here yes. for one ninety nine ninety five, and we need to get on that bandwagon like real quick. Like buy all these supplements; it'll make your fucks fuckier. That, only we, if I would only that? I would make only I would only promote those if if we could say it just like that though. We can. It will make your fucks fuckier. Let's get some guarana and some stevia extract and put it all in a pill, and it's your fucks fuckier pill. <laughs> I am not a big fan of supplements of any kind whatsoever. I'm okay of, like, honest-to-God real supplements, you know, like a vitamin C tablet or, like, an iron pill or whatever, because... Or scotch. Uh, or scotch. Whiskey. Vodka. Weed. Um, I like ones I use them for, like, focus... Um, and different types of supplements, but they're all natural. I use melatonin to sleep. Yeah, see? Those I supplements. Also use tequila to sleep. I drink chamomile tea. That's as, that's Supple as far as I go. Supplementish. Well, I, uh, I absolutely stand behind melatonin as a sleep aid. It was prescribed to me because it's non-prescription. And uh, you can't get addicted to it. So it's great. Actually, and I need it. you know what? Let me look up something. There's... I can't remember what it is. Some kind of ground oyster shell. I, I don't even know. But there was a supplement out there. It was just in the news. Some guy was taking it to prevent cancer. And he got cancer? And he died. <laughs> but of I'm course, sorry. this is what you get. So you just have to be really, really careful when you're taking these supplements, right? Yeah. 
I posted the story, I reposted the story uh, of this article about this guy dying from taking the supplement. And one of my friends said, oh my God, I have this supplement just for that reason. Think and but I haven't been taking the... them because it was bitter. I have to look it up. But um, so here's so the thing: she's gonna toss them was out, it a, which is, is it good. A, I mean, is there there's a difference? Is it, ugh, is it a supplement with natural ingredients or is it one oh, that yeah. has like added? Let me tell you something: ground uh, oyster shells mm-hmm. are it's natural. a natural ingredient, right? Okay, and they're they're used for. I mean, I know what you're talking about. They're used for methane gas something. is a natural ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> Quinine, strychnine, and all the other nines are natural ingredients. <laughs> right. What was that? Oh, no, there was that guy who was... There was also that guy who just died recently from cyanide poisoning because he ate apricot pits. Yeah. Listen, assholes. Apricot pits are where we get fucking cyanide from. Stop eating them. <laughs> Apple seeds are also very poisonous. Arsenic, I believe. Yes. I think. And we know a person we know a person who eats the apples stem to stern and everything in between. I mean in small small amounts, just like all supplements, in small amounts they don't really do much. But when you start taking concentrations of five hundred, eight hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred milligrams. Anything but anything in large quantities isn't uh and then, and then you have the other side of the coin, like vitamin C. I don't know if all of you know this, but vitamin C, while awesome in a little pill form, you need to take like 40 pills to get the actual vitamin C uh, benefit. <clears throat> and then, of course, you have all that filler that you have to have go through your system as well. So that's Just, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of supplements, although I do, you know, a website for a supplement guy, which I love. I love him to death. I love supplements and oils and all of that. I like I like supplements that are referred to me by my actual honest to God doctor. You know, the man with all the training and not <clears throat> some fly by night jerk water dude. You know, taking kickbacks from the drug company. Right. That guy. That one? Yeah, that, that one. one. The one who prescribes so many drugs that we have uh so many addiction opioid addiction yeah an opiate addiction yeah. those ones those ones and there are some good ones out there though. yeah and then there Hospital are pill pushers the then there are, then there are pill pushers who will push anything mm-hmm. and yeah. everything what is an osteopath do you know what the what it means i don't know the the definition of the word i do know that an osteopath goes to school for an additional two years medical school after their, their MD, so they're they're basically one step beyond an MD, and they are their whole philosophy is treating the entire individual or the human, and not just not just treating the symptom. In other words, you know, you got an infection in your thumb, but it actually came because you stubbed your toe on a nail and it went through your system. So they. Kind of, they take it another step to see if. Uh, so they're Doctor House. They. Uh, without the attitude. Yeah, without the attitude. <laughs> yeah, the guy who did my lung surgery was an osteopath. So. How much did he? Osteo, I would think, would mean bone. Yeah. Like calcium, bone. something, yeah. something that affects. <coughs> Osteo is a term that's used for calcium and bone deposit. So that supplemental that uh, I was talking about earlier was uh, apricot kernel extract. There you go. Apricot kernel extract. Cyanide poisoning. Apricot kernel extract is called cyanide. We use it to kill terrorists. Yeah. So where does one get apricot kernel extract? Like, do they Any nature food it? store? Yes. They, they should not be selling apricot kernel extract because that is cyanide. <laughs> That is what you get when you extract the juices or whatever the fuck it is you want out of an apricot kernel. It's like almond milk, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. I believe arsenic comes from almonds as well. Uh, from Isn't almond milk like the result of like four almonds per box? No, it's like a nut juice. So this is how you make nut milks. You grind the nuts up, you soak them in water, you grind that again, you blend it till it's smooth, and then you strain out all the chunks, and what you have left is, is nut milk. water. Yep, nut water. That's how they make, well, not coconut milk, but that's I how they make milk. all the nut milks, and that's how they make horchata. Horchata is rice milk. It's just rice, ground up, although I think that's actually soaked in real milk, not just water. But and sweetened. 
and sweet, way sweetened. I rice can't. Rice milk is sweetened. I cannot drink horchata anymore. Um, Actually, all the nut milks are sweetened. I Thai got people horchata are fans. on accident. I once somebody was going to get food, and I said I want orange soda. And they thought and you he said came horchata. Back with horchata, and I'm like, what the? This isn't orange. But it's delicious. It's good, huh? I, I can't drink it. Why not? Uh, well, number one, I remember it being like way too sweet. It was super sweet. So. And it looks like nut milk. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's not good horchata, it's junky. So let's get back to Alex Jones. So Alex right. Jones is a crazy guy. Now you, you, so how many of, how many of his YouTube videos have you watched? I mean, I haven't sat and watched 5,000. I saw a clip and then I thought this guy can't be for real. So I went to see if he was for real. Like, I thought maybe it was a spoof. He and did have, when, as he was going up to not lose custody of his children in court, he did say that Alex Jones' character is just a character. Right. Much right. like Alexia is just a character. Right. But there's a huge difference. Yes. Because his following is crazy. And not saying ours isn't, because I kind of include myself. I follow the show, too, and I'm a little crazy. But um, his following is... is but, extreme in, in some regards and they kind of take his word as bible but yeah. we're not telling people aliens are invading well, their the buttholes the and selling them supplements that's the thing like, so it'd be a difference if you know we're saying like hey oh my god like i we have a, a get a quick cure way to lose weight we did it we did a great job Pay two hundred dollars <laughs> for these supplements and you um, too could be as thin as my and ass. You too could look like us. <laughs> <laughs> my supplement like, is called the Carbicide. And then we're like only two hundred dollars, and then people go out and do it. And then, I, like throughout the show, he's like, "Hey, the only way I support the show is if you buy these supplements. Like, I don't have all these advertisers." just the supplements in my old days in radio uh working behind the scenes most of the shows had supplements as sponsors mm -hmm. even especially the crazy ones the ones that had the crazy people the on crazier them, they are you know why is, because the people who listen to them will buy anything you tell them to <laughs> just ask joel that guy's a fucker. That guy's a fucker. He's such Does a he fucker. Does he sell supplements as well? He doesn't. No, that's no, the that's No, the he that's sells. The he church. sells God. Yeah, he sells God. I, that's sell, what I know Jesus. who he is. He but. sells Jesus, and he makes money off of Jesus, and then he does not help Jesus's people in their you time know how of need. Pissed off the real Jesus would be if he walked into Joel Olstein's church. Like he'd smite the fuck out of that. He would. He'd, he'd be, be like, like, all you needed was a loaf of bread and two fucking fish, asshole. Like, what is this? <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, what didn't he like church? totally destroy one church he walked into one time because they were selling coffee in the lobby or some shit like that? Like Jesus, Jesus? <laughs> there's a story about Jesus walking in. <laughs> yes, is. on the steps of the temple, yes. <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were. They had a coffee cart, like a Starbucks. No, no, like no. there was a little coffee bean in there. Were inside the church and Every every kiosk inside a mall right. would be total dust right now. <laughs> well, the mall's not a holy. Well, no, no, I take that back. Mall is a holy place to people like me. There's a little, there's a little Starbucks in there, and Jesus is like, "Get your ass out of here." <laughs> That's what he was. He walked into church. He's like, "What the fuck, man?" This is a house of worship. Right. It's we are here to celebrate my dad and my ass <laughs> not give and receive money from fucking people. If we weren't going to hell before, like it is, bam, it is on. But that is oh, a true story. Uh, no, no, no. no. I'm sorry. The greatest fucking advertisement on television I have ever seen in my life. Is it for the Halo Top ice cream? No. Those are good advertisements, by the way. It was, uh, what the fuck's his name? Ronald okay. Reagan's son. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ronald Reagan's son's his name son. be Ronald, Ronald Reagan. 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 Okay. I just saw an ad for him, and it was for an organization called Freedom from Religion. Hmm. He said, and he's talking about, you know, uh, this, this is a country, and, and, and it's, uh, you know, built on religious freedom. And that also means freedom from religion. Yes. And he said... And he closes by saying, <laughs> he says, and I've been an atheist for 22 years, and I ain't afraid to go to hell. <laughs> True. I'm don't not get us wrong. To see it. it's, it's awesome. Don't get, don't get us wrong. Um, I'm actually quite a religious person. Me too. So is she. I are don't you, know if are, you are. Uh, okay. But define, I'm. Define 
There we go. But I'm borderline atheist. I'm not borderline atheist. I'm, I'm borderline. So I have this view I'm of borderline religion humanist. that's very scientific. Yes. So my view of God or goddess is very scientifically uh, motivated. Uh, filtered. The, the two are so. not mutually exclusive. You can believe in both. Yes. There are inconceivable there are inconceivable forces at play in our universe and every astrophysicist will tell you there's something going on we don't know what it is we can prove it exists but we can't prove what it is there are, there are too many religions out there to be able to say that yours is right and yours isn't nah, right. there's, there's just too many out there here's so here is don't like are people like joel olstein no here's here is a tenant from our faith <laughs> uh which is that every true religion is a different path to the same truth I also have a bone to what pick is with. That same truth? I also have a bone to pick with New Age guru David Avocado fucking Wolf. <laughs> I like David Avocado Wolf sometimes. I swear to God, I cringe every time one of my personal friends shares one of his stupid videos. Oh my God! Granted, some of his the stuff that he covers, he puts his name in the corner with that little fucking avocado thing. It's a cool video, like you know the new kinds of gardens or this new habitat that looks awesome. Find it somewhere else instead of posting a David Avocado Wolf video, please. Because he is as much of an idiot as Alex Jones. Jasper said he's spiritual, not religious. I am religious and spiritual, and I can help you find God. <laughs> no money has to exchange That's what she hands. Said. <laughs> that is what she said. And still no money has to Who exchange hands. Who has two thumbs that can suck a dick like she's a chip? A <laughs> No, no, no. Whores get paid. Get, I don't get, get paid. paid. Sorry. Slut. There you go. Yeah. I'm a promiscuous one. <laughs> Why are you not monetizing on this? Because then, then it would make my actions illegal. Hey, we've made 30 cents off our YouTube monetization videos. Yes. What? Where are we going to spend all those pennies? <laughs> We also have a Patreon account. For those of you who don't know, you can go to patreon.com slash sensitybounty and uh, supply us with a monthly, small monthly fee. And watch our YouTube videos because we're saving up for a pack of gum. Yep. So, one so, to share. Uh, yep. The station has made 20 cents in advertising this month. Nice. Hey, all right. Things that are on our, our uh, you know. Facebook, the page. Can we yeah. bring all this money in next week? Put it on the table so I can roll in it. Okay. Like it's my dream. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go to the car. <laughs> raid change my change cup. cup. I just want to raid. I just want to roll in it. Like only, I always want to. Like you want to roll a finger in only, it? Like no, my body. Like I always say, I'm going to cash a like one of my commission checks, but I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna be like, I just want all dollars, and then I just want to throw it and roll in it. And then afterward, I want to pour bleach on my bucks. body when I think of how dirty the money really is. I was but, gonna ask about what okay. if what if a dollar gets wedged in like your poonie? It'll be gross. But I'm gonna <laughs> scooch McDuck it. Like I'm gonna go in that money. I'm gonna like, and, and it probably will be more coins than anything. So I'm gonna pile that shit on my bed. I'm gonna climb up on a chair. I'm gonna scrooge McDuck down into the bed. I'm gonna swim in it. Three days later, she's gonna pull a nickel out of her pants and go, "Holy shit, that's stuck to my ass for three days." I'd have no doubt. She's gonna, gonna fart and it's gonna sound like shaking a change bag. <laughs> It'll sound like I won in a casino. <laughs> in an old ass casino, cause not in these days. I'll be like, "Win a win, I've chicken dinner." No, oh, no, no. They still make the noise, like the coins are falling. Yeah, it's just as they're end. printing your ticket. <laughs> I went. I was. Is they're transferring your Bitcoin to your Bitcoin card. <laughs> I was at a casino once with a friend, and I do get quite annoying sometimes, as you all can attest to. And um, he was pulling money out of the ATM, so I just stood there screaming. I'm like, "We won! We won! We won!" I was uh, grabbing the cash out. My mom used to work at a casino as a floor person. If you don't know what a floor person is, that's when you hit that little button and it says change attendant. They're not change attendants anymore. 
uh, they're floor people now. And usually they're just coming over to unstick your printer because it's not printing anymore. Or to pay you. Or, that, or they go, ma'am, you hit your button for the seventh time. Can yeah, they're just, like. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, just, can you stop leaning on here? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the number one question she always got was which machine is hot or which machine is paying out tonight? Do you know what her answer was every single time? The one you're sitting at? The ATM. <laughs> She's like, you're guaranteed to get money out of that one most of the time. <laughs> oh, she got hit on ass. by John Wayne Bobbitt after he had his Bobbitt Bobbitted. No, oh. I would have yeah, done, huh. done it. Did she? Oh, God, I no. She was like, no, 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 no. Before we started this recording on the Facebook video, you said you would look any celebrity's balls. I would. I'd lick those balls, too. John Wayne Bobbitt's balls. Hell, yeah. And but I would take a picture balls? of the... No, they reattached his dick. I want to take a picture of his Frankencock. This is this is okay. So this is the difference between Sierra and I. I wouldn't take my 15 minutes of fame for licking John Wayne Bobbitt's ball. I would as long as I got a selfie with him and Frankencock. Quick. (laughs) But I think there's no. There is. No, they found it and they reattached his dick. He was doing porn. If my dick was out in a field somewhere, I would never be like reattach that shit like. Worms were if crawling some, in there Hold on. Stuff. First off, number one, you're a female. Now, from the male perspective, a girl cut your dick off, threw it in a field. They found your dick, said they could reattach it. Would you have it reattached? But, but stuff Sh- is sh- in sh- the sh- fields, sh- and if it's dirty. If I couldn't bigger one, yes. But stuff is in the field. It Men are emotionally attached to those things. No, no, no. That thing could be half moldy and the, zombified. The, the has a five-hour rule as opposed to the five-second Is that rule? like the five... <laughs> rule for dicks there's a five i wish you guys told me before there's a five second rule for dicks i believe i believe if you lose your finger i believe if you lose your finger in a a wood planing accident or something like that it's like a 50 minute rule Uh, you got a couple of hours if you can keep it cool yeah yeah. You had a couple Because they put that Listen. shit on ice and take it to, in the ambulance. Where you? where were you guys in my 20s not telling me that there wasn't a five-second dick rule? <laughs> like, where were you guys when I needed you the most? Why? Were you not putting dicks in your mouth because they hit the ground? <laughs> if they touch the ground more than five seconds? Listen, oh. if that boy pulls his pants off and it touches his ground, I'm putting it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to go like this. Sure am. <laughs> That's exactly how that's going to go. <laughs> it is going in your mouth and like all the way. Back. Not just the tip. It like, is going like, like, to take you out. Listen, that's this is about that. as much as you're getting in my mouth. That's about the length that's going in. I got a shallow mouth right there. But I'll suck the fuck out of the tip of that thing. What do you do with the rest? Wrap it around like a... No, you just, just stroke it. <laughs> Lick the edges. <laughs> you know, like those big ass lollipops. It's not like you stick the whole thing in your mouth. You just. <laughs> I think we have lost it. This would be a good time for one of those commercial breaks. <laughs> if we had commercials. Can we sell supplements? <laughs> what's that? What's that? The advertising now. Uh, Eugenics or something. Yeah. Eugenics. And, 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 and the funny part is that they are not targeting it to the men. Their target audience is women. Eugenics is the editing of genes so that you have superpower children. That's eugenics. Well, they got something that sounds like that. Oh. <laughs> no, we're talking about it. That, it's <laughs> like that resveratol shit. Remember that resveratol remember guy? I remember the resveratol in the crazy show. Yeah. Was the res- <laughs> Uh, the resveratol is a direct uh, ascendant, not descendant. What is it when they're a precedent? Precedent. Ancestor. Yeah, whatever. A parent <laughs> of the Genix thing that he's talking about. I would hashtag this stuff, but I have no idea what you guys are fucking talking about. So eugenics, hashtag I know what eugenics is because on my birthday, ah, oh, famous people who share my birthday. Sean Spicer was born on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see which him? Gonna talk, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But the reason I know great. what eugenics is is because I was also born on the same day that Victoria Woodhull 
was born. Oh, no shit. And she was the first woman to ever run for president, but she also believed in eugenics, which is akin to what the Nazis were trying to do. And Basically, <laughs> if your baby is not what you want it to be, you kill it and try for another one until you get it, it right. Breeding. Isn't so that that's why I know what, what they eugenics used to is. Do in like Japan, if you had a girl, they used to do it in every culture. That's China. China. Yeah. Thank no, you. and that's not. It's not. It's not limited to single Asian cultures. Every culture, every culture, every culture has done that. That's true. They the Gauls, the girls, the Gauls, the Celts, the Romans, the Russians, the Polacks, everybody. Americans. Americans. I mean, it's not like eugenic-y, but <laughs> it's, you know, boys are preferred. And and if your child was born a little, eh, then uh, they'd get rid of them, too. Yep. That's why girls didn't get rights until after black people did. Uh, voting rights, rather. It's pretty bad. You learn something new every day. That's why we're a girl show. You can slob a knob and apparently <laughs> As she every wishes. culture gets rid of What's up with your mic and the I don't know. Speaker? It's super hot right now. Oh. Super hot. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Now I just, just I really, I, I, I am. Like, I need a dick in my mouth. Like, uh, back, we, need like a, we need like a stunt dick in here. Like, just we almost moments. had a stunt dick in here we today. We can't do yeah, stunt dicks. Stunt dick. We can't do it. We can't do it on sh TV. Right. Stunt dick can sit under the table, and I can just be like, I'd be like, excuse me, just just a minute, I'll be right. <laughs> I had, we had a guest once who offered that <laughs> that he would go under the table at the old uh, studio. Uh, let's say, let's say hello to some of our people in the showbiz online with us. Woo woo! Uh, Brian, hi Brian. He says hello, ladies. Jasper, of course, has joined us. Brian, but not the Brian we have a platonic crush on. Uh, although I could probably have a platonic crush on Brian. Um, I have crushes on, so I really have crushes on like a lot of people. I really like people a lot. In my so, real life, real life right now, just one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, Jasper, uh, I me. mentioned Cindy has joined us. Cindy. Yeah, Cindy. You know, old Cindy. Oh. And then uh, uh, Vendetta, he says, I believe the best religion is currently the polytheistic mythos of comics. They are all just <laughs> morality tales. And Luana. Hey, Luana. Hi, Luana. So, you want to talk about what happened this week in our community, in the BBW I, community? Let's save that for the end. Okay. We'll save that for the end. Then let's talk um, about Sean Spicer. Spicy! So, Sean Spicer came out on the Emmys as if <coughs> Melissa McCarthy was playing him. He rolled his little podium right out there, and at first, Melissa McCarthy looked mortified. Like, she was yes. like, <gasps> like, she looked she was totally mortified and then he just totally rolled with it from what i understand sean spicer has always enjoyed the parody that she's done of him he's always had a really good sense of humor about it wow. but you know when you spend he wasn't allowed to say that. no he's probably not allowed to say that but if you make fun of someone and then they come out and acknowledge the parody you have done of them it can be quite mortifying i know this but he took it he was such a good sport about it that in the end she looked a little more comfortable but he was absolutely hilarious he was hilarious. He, he, was, he was funny he was funny but he got some he got some horrendous a feedback of, some well, of course he did backlash anyone who works for trump willingly will from this right. point forward well, even if they quit it's, because he's a dick you know what it, 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 it's the blow black the blow back was from people who don't want sean spicer and what he did normalized that was right. the big thing if he gets put into the you know if he becomes part of the crew to make fun of the trump administration even though he was one of the guys that helped perpetuate all the crap that uh, we've gotten from the trump administration then how good is that it's a little bit like holding a grudge for being a dick right he, he was a total dick and now we're holding a grudge even though he has seen the error of his ways right and, and he's come out it. and he's like hey i i mean i can kind of Get He's like, hey, I'm not not down with the whole racist mm -hmm. thing because that's about I'm the time as, he quit. Yeah, I'm not as much of an asshole as y'all think I am. And, like, you know, he can't be that much of an asshole if he shares my birthday. Just saying. Um, I beg to differ. Yeah, for yeah, his portrayal said, of the president. Is, yeah. yeah, here's your uh, here's your yeah. Emmy. <laughs> this isn't. That was like a big fuck you to Trump. 
Yep, yep. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I fall on the side of uh, I don't want him, Sean Spicer, normalized either. Not until at least Trump is out. Of this. Um, but I don't know. As a Libra, like Sean Spicer, I'm kind of like this on where how I feel about so him. I think being if, part of the comedy team against the Trump administration. I think if he came out and made a formal apology for all of the bullshit that he helped perpetrate, then I'd be more accepting of him. Now, the fact that he's willing to anyone who has a, a big enough sense of humor to enjoy a parody of themselves is kind of all right in my book. And it was the host's idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They reached out and he agreed. Yeah, I mean. And it was a surprise. He surprised the entire. Yeah, which is why she, Melissa McCarthy looked totally mortified because she was like, oh, shit, son. I was just doing that. So I will tell okay, you well, guys, Richard I realize. Nixon, Richard Nixon went on uh, laughing and said, sock it to me. But he didn't apologize for being a douchebag, did he? No, I know. So Spicer. Yeah, um, Spicer, though. He I'm, apologized for being a douchebag. No, not yet. Oh. I'm, well, I feel like it was a. A little step in the right direction. Here's kind of like the, a tongue-in-cheek yeah. apology. I get the I get the blowback. I do. I absolutely do. And I've I've actually had some in-depth conversations uh, regarding this because at the end of the day, he chose to do a job that was shitty and misleading to you know people, and he I've been continued there. to choose I've done that. to do the job. With all that being said, I fucking love Sean Spicer. Like spicy, I want him to be my baby daddy. Like he is adorable. I, <laughs> I absolutely love spicy. He played the Easter Bunny that shows he's versatile in the bedroom. <laughs> I he's am, got a fursona. He's got a fursona. <laughs> like that's what sells me there. I hated him until that moment. Until that moment, I would no. I, I never did actually from the get go. I was totally into him. But I have to admit, the furry, uh, the furry outfit kind of drove it home for me. That's one of the reasons why I'm a little forgiving of him, besides the fact that I share his birthday, which I only found out just a few weeks ago, um, is that I've been in the position where I've had to es espouse the opinion of someone above me and not <laughs> liked having to do that and then was so glad of being able to walk it back later. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, but I did. I did the whole. I walked it back, or I, I just quit. quit. That's exactly what I did. I, I just. I said no. But I can't do this anymore. So. Let's, yeah. Let's be real. If you've worked your whole life, and I, I didn't realize until later, because um, I thought he was kind of like a lost deer with this job, and I didn't realize the full background that he's done it before. Um, <laughs> so he should have, you know, maybe been a little bit better at his job. But uh, again, I still love him. I still would not kick him out of my bed. I would not. Um, I would run up and hug him and, and his Easter Bunny outfit. What about you so. guys on uh, Facebook? What do you think of the Sean Spicer appearing on the Emmys? Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, so, I think it was funny. It was funny. Don't get me wrong. It was hilarious. Uh, he said almost exactly the same words that he said during the, what is it, the inauguration. This crowd is the biggest crowd ever. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. On TV and in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was cute. I thought the little rolling thing was cute. Yeah, but that was, that was the best part. That was the best part. Yeah. Um, I love that it was a surprise. The yeah. reactions from the audience, all over the audience, not just Melissa McCarthy's, but no, everybody but all in the of audience them. was yeah. crazy. Um, I love little <clears throat> things like that. But then I love Stephen Colbert and the way that he hosts. Oh, I'm pretty well, he sure he had, an, you know, um, an idea about it. I love the I fact. I don't think people realize they should have been angry until they were told you should have been angry. It, it could have been the that could yeah. have been it too because I, it I only takes one SJW to fuck it up for everybody. After but I think every, everyone was taking photos with him. They were drinking beers together. They were like, "Hey, Sean." Come but on Spicer's over. always been that kind of guy who you kind of feel sorry for because you can when he was up there at the podium, you could tell he was struggling to tell the news that he was supposed to tell. You know, he always had that kind of maybe that's why you loved him so much because. He, he was, was reluctant. Always, uh, underneath, just a little bit, struggling to say the things that he had to say or coming okay, so up with what ways about to. Sanders? I stopped watching. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I did the same thing. I don't really watch her when she gives her. Unless it's, you know, something super. I watched some briefs afterwards. Something on but policy it's, or. Yeah, it's just very. I, I, my whole she thing is that. Match with uh, Alex Jones. No, I know she's they not. I, no, I mean I think she's a, a pretty. I I don't hate her. I don't. 
I think she's a pretty decent person just she's trying no, to do her job. She's no Kellyanne Conway. Right. <laughs> I love oh, that. Jesus. <laughs> I just got vomit in that. my teeth. <laughs> I love the circus part of politics. I love the whole, like, I don't. Uh, well, but it's I like do. what it's like but earlier I when I said it's like a traffic wreck that you're just gawking at because but you listen, can't look away. I don't like when it's the main event. Like I don't want ah. the fucking elephant in the circus to go nuts and crash everyone in the crowd. I do want one of the clowns cycling around and juggling pins to drop one and fall. So I don't want the main attraction to kill a to, thousand people. To, you know, to kill our country yeah. um, or to get us, you know, bombed. But I do like when the side circus people, you know, like the guy selling the soda trips down the stairs and dumps it on some of the people in the audience. Like, Supplement. I like the sides. Yeah, the Supplements. Supplements. I like the side circus. It spills shows. everywhere. I like the ones that, you know, that happen on the side. We do are and going to have a rampaging elephant in our circus, ladies and gentlemen. I predict Not that anymore. we were elephants. I uh, hasn't there a law been passed that elephants can no longer be in the circus? Well, I was speaking yeah. metaphorically. Oh, got it. Right, metaphorically, Sorry. but you are correct. <laughs> I believe they. I believe they're out. Like, don't take it so fucking seriously. Jesus. Right? It's just politics, man. Chill out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, our political state here in the United States of America is such a giant. Uh, there are two, the, the two best ways for you to change that are to vote and donate money to causes that will help change votes. I would like to add to that. Any of you slimy puke motherfuckers out there that say that you support veterans and don't vote, get the fuck out. Yeah. It also helps when you just get into arguments on Facebook. Like, that totally changes the world. It's, yeah. yeah, and standing on a street corner with a poster board sign screaming at other people, that changes the world, too. No, vote and donate money to those people who can make a difference. Uh, you, everyone, on all sides, on all sides, I'm not defending anyone. I am admonishing everyone who gets into violent protests. We are very preachy today. We are very preachy today. <laughs> Listen, if you want to go and sit in a... Slobbing, 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 or whatever. 7% of eligible voters did not fucking vote in the last presidential election. Yep. A lot of people. So, a lot of people. So here's the deal. We their vote means anything. Right, and now and, here's and, the deal. And we, they have drank the Kool Aid. But guys, guys, That's we can't. They want you to believe your vote does not count. Listen, here's my whole thing. We can't change what happened in November. There's nothing we can change about November. Nope, but we can change so the one keep, that's happening in three years. Right. Or, or even year. before in, no. in other in local other areas. This is this is why a lot of people a lot of people say my vote doesn't count, but they're only looking at the federal main election. But even there, your vote counts because the only reason Hillary Clinton did not the only reason the Democrats did not win is because Democrats didn't vote. The same number of Republicans voted for Donald Trump that voted for the last Republican candidate. The exact same number, but it was like thirty percent less Democrats voted and didn't just like vote for another party. They just didn't vote at all. It is because you s did not vote that your candidate did not make it in. You want your candidate to make it in? You need to vote. You cannot sit back and go, I'm not going to participate in a broken motherfucking thing and my vote doesn't count. Your vote does count. Even in the f shitty, fucked up electoral college system that we use, your vote does fucking because count. Because your local politicians make up part of your electoral college. Your local... you there. We did, we did a super special political thing when Barack Obama was going to be elected. And uh, one of our co-hosts at the time, Sweet Cheeks, she was even volunteering down at uh, Obama headquarters here in Vegas, uh, doing everything that she could to get him elected. But then we brought Steve Sanson on from Veterans in Politics, who does his show right here on this station, uh, brought him on to talk about local politics and hardly anybody in our studio knew anything about local politicians. Nobody knows anything about local politicians, but that's where your focus should be. Which we at the station here are offering, and I'm telling everyone this, if you know someone who is running for office, have them contact me, I will bring them in the studio, let them tell everybody out there why we should vote for them. I don't care what party you're in, what office you're running for, you get a hold of me and you can come in here and talk your shit for an hour. The pirate party. Arg. Arg. I would join the pirate party. That's a really good uh, offer. Um, 
I'll write that down so well, when I do the social media, I can. It, it, I, I've had a chance sitting in on, on Steve's show a number of times uh, and getting to listen to some of the candidates and um, the judges, and those are the ones that, that especially at the local level we need to be voting on because they affect our lives as much, if not more, than the federal level does. Judges, sheriffs, and uh, city and, and council members. have no clue who the hell they're voting for. Oh, that's the guy, I saw his sign on the way here, I'm going to vote for him. Or, I'm only going to vote for women. Or, I'm only, you know... I'm only going to vote for my party, or I'm only going to vote for this. That, that, I will I will let you Democrats know, there are a number of Republican Party members that you would seriously enjoy as your elected officials, because they believe a lot of the same things you do. At the local level. At, At the, the local, local level. level. That's correct. So... so anyway, Stands, spread the word. Very cool. Uh, if you're running for any office, get a hold of me. You got time on the on the thing. No charge. That's free. See, that's how you do it. And he might be able to and get no no weapons allowed in the studio. And he might be able to get Ricky Cheese to come in and interview you for you, because he's got <laughs> he's got his fingers. Ricky Cheese. Maybe awesome. I'll come in and interview you, motherfuckers. I think that would be fun. No, no, no. no interview. No, no. They can sit up there and, and just spend an hour talking. But, but but what if there are some questions put, we want to ask? Don't like, you ask it ahead of time. They wait, put wait, it wait. out. You I have a friend have who ran. Uh, right. Contact information. Right. Or call in info. There. Here's my thing. This is why I'm running for office. This is why I think you should vote for me. Here's how you can contact. Me. I, I I like those people who ask hard hitting questions. That, that, Did you really? No. Can we please? I don't want people to be afraid to come in here and say what they want to say. If we don't do what the RJ's going to do it, so we might as well do it first. Fuck the RJ. <laughs> I think and the, the big ass horse they rode in on. Yes. Okay, I think one of the best things, I had a, a friend who ran, he ran twice for um, different positions. And one of the best things that he had out there, and I, I, my friend's husband, but one of the best things that he put out there, he just did an informational like, hey, this is what I'm about. Um, a lot of people, like his competition was saying, he believes in this and he believes in that and he voted this way and he did this and he just sat there and he's like, this is kind of all, he didn't say crap, he was very professional, but he's right. like, I, I didn't say any of this. He's like, here's the deal, here's what I believe in, here's what I stand for, here's what I want to bring to the community. And if you have any if questions, you have any you questions yes. Here. And right. he's like, you can contact me, you know, I'm available 24-7, and here's, and it's not even just one method. He's not even like, just call me. He's like, Facebook, and, you know, this way, and you call this yeah. number, and you, he made himself very available, and then he planned some um, community events uh, at his um, synagogue where people got to come in and, you know, answer, uh, well, ask I, questions I and everything. Uh, her name is Sarah Gazzola. She's running uh, for the Nevada State Senate. She's going to be running against Dean Heller. Uh oh. Now, she's a Republican. I don't agree with a lot of what she says and what she, you know, stands for. But I gave her the opportunity to stand up there and say, "Here's what I, this is what I believe in. This is why I want you to vote for me." So I dare all of you. What a what a um, nice offer you're making, Johnny Fever. That is a very nice that offer. That is awesome. It, it's it's. I'm just trying to save us all. Yeah. What? <laughs> good luck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We have five minutes. Go ahead. Oh, do you want to talk about that one? Yeah. Or just okay. So I was um, I was trying to share a little bit with her. I uh, recently kind of went back on the the dating sites. Yes. As interesting as always. <laughs> but if you want to find out why I stopped for a while, read my last blog. Hashtag Elvis. That's on our website at SinCityBounty.com. Under Toxie as a blog. Um, but I decided to kind of get back out there and, you know, kind of get in there again. And so, and I'm going to use this, this dude's screen name. I mean, he was nice, but he, he kind of didn't get it. Um, but this gentleman reached out to me, and I have in my profile about, you know, podcasts and all of that. And um he said your profile is adorable i'd be interested in watching your podcast and i said thank you i assure you um it's quite funny entertaining would be worth a watch i'm curious though am i misreading your name or is it int intentionally offensive i'll get to his name in a moment um offensive i haven't heard that before you know really i'm surprised uh you sure this podcast is funny starting to seem like a bit of a stretch <laughs> Yeah, we we stretch the funny as much as totally. we can. Totally. So here's, 
here's his name. His name is Chival Retard. And I'm oh. only saying it to read his name. It's actually a word that we do not use. Um, you, I, I was I was looking at it, and I guess you could say Chival Retard. Well, and that's why I thought I'm going to ask and give him the right. benefit of the doubt that I'm misreading it. Maybe I got really focus on one piece of it, which is why I made that comment. Of course, it's spelled completely as chival retard, just smushed um, together, not chivalry tard as a second name. <laughs> so I said, you know, and he said that, uh, are, you sure it's, are you sure it's funny? I said, you're, uh, you're probably right. Although it's NSFW. I tell everyone that. It is NSFW. We just talked about sucking schlongs. Off um, the floor. We don't tolerate people who use the word retard. <laughs> Uh, we all have our lines. That's one of mine. You know, best of luck, blah, blah, blah. He then went in to try and justify it. Like, I volunteered for this. I have family members uh, right. who are special needs. He said needs. something about working with special needs Yeah, kids, I work with right? special needs. I, I can't. It's terribly disappointing at how overly sensitive society has become. I can't believe I'm even having this conversation. Um, nevertheless, I hope I didn't ruin your whole week. If I did, that's pretty retarded no <laughs> so oh this is not the first conversation this week that i've had about this, this is actually the third time i've had this the one and only time that word is allowed to be used in a conversation is when you're talking about retarding the growth of a plant in its natural formation right here's the deal there are certain you words that <laughs> There, to me, there are certain words out there that I don't care if you sit and say, uh, I'm okay using it because my cousin, and, and you're like, I'm okay using it because I, you know, I volunteer here and there and I can use it. To me, if there are certain words that are found offensive to a group, specifically to a protected group, and people tell you like, hey, this is offensive fucking listen it's like the n-word y'all it is never okay to say the n-word i don't right. care what you look like or who you are or who your best friend is or who you're sleeping with or my family members are and, and this and that no if you are told that this is offensive by a protected group or by the particular group that or by someone of your group telling you it's fucking offensive be like yo dude don't use that word but you instead, probably shouldn't use that word. But instead, people start trying to justify. And they're like, I'm okay because I volunteered for special needs kids. What? The first <laughs> motherfucker who comes up and uses the R word on my special needs kids is going to get my special needs foot right, right the fuck up his special needs ass. <laughs> I'm going yes. to retard his brain yes. growth. It was accepted <laughs> how long ago. It is not now. It is no longer okay. And it's right. not even about being PC. It's about being considerate of your fellow human, of your fellow man, of your fellow woman. Just be considerate of like other people that we have to share this earth with. This guy, this is, it's his username. It's his username. So he's, <laughs> he's obviously way okay with it. And, and you know what? The girl who thinks it's adorable is going to be his soulmate. Well, obviously they do. He acted shocked that this was a thing. And I'm like... I bet you he had, he acts shocked every time somebody tells him it's offensive. Probably. Or people... I mean, normally I wouldn't respond to something like that. But at that moment, I was like, you caught me at the wrong time, boy. <laughs> wrong time. I am. Uh, Five-hour rule yet. don't count with you. No. <laughs> Five-hour rule's out, buddy. <laughs> You're All dick. Right, we've got uh, um, just under two minutes. We do. So uh, you can go ahead. Uh, many, many years ago, when I was first on Twitter, um, I found uh, a profile and started following it because the girl who was manning the Twitter was hilarious. Her name was Kate on Twitter, C-A-T-A-Y. And she was a big girl. And according to her website, uh, it, she was making uh, fat people more... Oh, I can't remember the name. You can go to her website. It's Katay.com, C-A-T-A-Y.com. And uh, she's got uh, albums up there, but she was a big girl just like us. I did not know even back then when I started following her on Twitter that she was part of the BBW community, but she has been a huge part of so, the BBW community for a long time. She's a huge influence in the BBW community, mainly because she was one of the first big girls to quote unquote get naked on the internet trying to normalize being um, our bodies and, and being fat and showing that, you know, we're human and 
um, you know, we, we can be accepted and it, it can be artistic and, you know, it could be many things. And she's the one who led that, therefore spawning many, there you go, spawning many, many other things. For example, um, and I keep meaning to set it up to get her on this show, but we've talked before, I was in the, I was part of the Out of Positivity Project, which is by um, an artist named Substantia Jones. She's a photographer and, and she photographs um, nude big women and it's it's just it, it's amazing and it's artistic and it's beautiful um, and Kate uh, helped influence her into doing what she did like she credited this woman now cat uh, and so her, her name is cat and a few other things she did, I believe she was on the show right before my time, but she came on to discuss Fat 2, which is a plus size group that she mm -hmm. started. Um, that is, you know, you have big women and sometimes we're very limited in clothing selection, especially if you live somewhere that your only choice is like Walmart or you have to drive an hour to Lane Bryant and that's so overpriced. And so she started this site so women everywhere had access to it's plus a size Facebook clothing. Group. It's Facebook. a Facebook clothing swap group. group. It's a clothing like you purchase other people's clothing. So you can go on and make money and sell your clothes. You can go on and buy clothes. Um, it, it's fabulous. And it started out when I first joined years ago. It was just a couple thousand people. And just the main group alone is over 20,000 individuals. And, you know, it spawned a lot of different ones, including like a, you know, a light and bridal and, you know, all of this. And accessories so, and nighttime. And, and she did Men's all of this. clothes. And copycat groups. Right. But she did all of this. Mm -hmm. This was all cat. Um, while she continued to kind of fight for our right, and I think you have it there, changing the world's view of fat chicks, um, one visitor at a time. Um, anyone who knew her, she was an amazing woman. She was inspiring to a lot, a lot of people. So many. Yeah. Um, she was an and inspiration. And hilarious. She had the quickest wit. I loved right. following her on Twitter. Right, and she and she was just like that in person. Mm -hmm. Like she was so funny, and she was this amazing woman. Like I always believe that I can determine, a, and it's not always the case, but I always feel if somebody's good to my child and they don't know them, but they can come in and carry on a conversation and speak to her like she's, you know, a human. I know you have a good heart because it's not always easy to like walk in and you know interact with other people's kids and every time she saw my daughter she just you know got right into conversation with her so well cat passed away a couple days ago she was found in her apartment uh they believe she had a heart attack um i believe i don't know if that's the official report yet but uh her brother uh went on facebook and announced to everybody that uh, she is now gone. So we've lost a uh, huge, beautiful, bright light in this world, in the BBW community, and in the world in general. And we're very sad about it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, but we loved you, uh, Kat, and uh, we'll carry on. Katay.com, C-A-T-A-Y.com. Go visit her page, give her some love. Uh, find her on Facebook, uh, whatever you can do. It's uh, hard when we lose someone in our community, especially someone that was such an inspiration as she was. I'm Alexia. Toxie. And Sierra. And we'll be back next week with SinCityBounty.com. <laughs>
just the same Can they be that close? Just let me stay for the 